don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know what you came to do. To praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! With well, the devil. He don't like it. I'm gonna praise the Lord. Devil, he don't like it. I'm gonna praise the Lord. The devil, he don't like it. I'm gonna praise the Lord. God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my head. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Well, my God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, God's not dead. Still alive, will God not dead? He's still alive. I feel him in my head, feel him in my feet, feel him all over me. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay every burden down, will glory, glory, hallelujah. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay every burning down. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Well, Lord, I'm feeling so much better since I lay every burning down. Well, Lord, I'm feeling so much better since I lay my burden down. Well, my Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Well, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Well, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Tell him what you want right now. We'll call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. We'll call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. We'll call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Tell him what you want right now. We'll my Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. We'll Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Well, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you want right now. Well, now if you want a blessing, tell him what you want. Well, if you want a blessing, tell him what you want. Well, now if you want a blessing, tell him what you want. Tell him what you want right now. For my God. Not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my head. 
Well, my God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my head. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. We'll praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon time. We'll praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. We'll now praise him. Praise him. We'll praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon time. We'll praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. Amen. Hadn't it been a good day today? My, 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 don't get any better than people getting saved on Sunday morning and, well, unless they get saved on Sunday night too, amen? It is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It's good to know that God is still God. Man, He is still in control of everything. We're going to slow it down here a little bit. Let's just stay right there in G chord. How many is ready to let God have His way in your life tonight? Would you sing with me? Well, let the Lord have His way in your life. Every day there's no peace, there's no joy until the Lord has His way. Place your life in His hands. Rest assured in His plan. Let the Until the Lord has His way, place your life in His hands. Rest assured in His plan. Let the Lord, let the Lord have His way. Lord, I can't. Without you holding my hand, the mountains too high, the valleys too wide. Down on my knees, I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk. Without you holding, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding. Well, I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Well, it's victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him. And all my love is to Him. He plunged me to 
victory beneath the cleansing blood. Well, I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory. I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angel singing and the old redemption story. At some sweet day, I'll sing up there the song of victory. Well, it's victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Well, I am blessed. that I serve Him, I am blessed. Oh, when I wake up in the morning, till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. Oh, I am blessed. If you're blessed, would you shout amen tonight? Before you're seated, turn around, look at someone and say, you know what, I'm just thrilled you're in the house of the Lord with me tonight, if you would. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Good to be in God's house this evening. We've got a few announcements. Can you all hear me? Now can you hear me? No difference? There we go. All right. We've got a few announcements this evening. Don't forget Stitches of Grace, Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. They're going to... Pack the Easter eggs for our Easter egg hunt Thursday afternoon at 3.30. So if you can come and help, they need a lot of help. So if you can help in that endeavor, they'd appreciate it. And our sunrise service is next Sunday at 7 o'clock, and then we'll have breakfast about 7.30. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Try to sign up. You're going to come for that. Our next church breakfast will be Saturday, April 14th at 7.30 in the morning. There'll be a sign-up sheet in the back for that. Ladies' Day Out, Saturday, April 21st. They're going to Greenwood like they do every year. And I think Brent's driving the bus, aren't you, Brent? So they'll pull out about what time? 8 o'clock, pulling out. Also, the church is going out to the Gostoff Restaurant on Friday night, April 20th. The bus is leaving here about 5.30 in the afternoon. So, Yeah, no, it's not about 5.30. It's 5.30. Ladies' meeting, Monday night, April 2nd, 6 p.m. That's all the announcements we have. If we could have some ushers, we'll take up our evening offering. <clears throat> Brother Ed, lead us in prayer. Amen. Go right on, guys.
God bless you for your giving tonight, folks. Kara, you better read Kim saying.
Thank you, Karen. Isn't that pretty? Brother Wayne. One day I came to him, I was so thirsty, I asked for water, my throat was so dry. He gave me water that I'd never dreamed of. But for this water, my Lord had to die. He said, I thirst, yet he made the river. I thirst, yet he made the sea. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. Now there's a river that flows as clear as crystal. It comes from God's throne above. And like a river, it dwells up inside me, bringing mercy and life-giving love. He said, I thirst, yet he made the river. He said, I thirst, yet he made the sea. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. He said, I thirst, yet he made the river. I thirst, yet he made the sea. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. Oh, in his great thirst, he brought water to me. Cool water. Thank you, Brother Wayne. Sheila? My secret sister asked me to sing this, so... You guys can sing with me. <clears throat> I've had many tears and sorrows, and I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong, but in every scene. Made me strong. 
Sheila. You know, when the storms of life come, and they do come, how do people that can't lean on Jesus, how do they get through? I'll never understand it. Brother Sammy. Brent's acoustic. How many love the Lord tonight? I love the Lord tonight. I was sitting back there thinking, I know a lot of, Davy would say it's dangerous when she thinks, but that's okay. But I'm so thankful that, he's okay. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you tonight. I want you to know I love each and every one of you. But I was thinking this morning, as in Sunday school, how I love Brother Scott's teaching. And how that he can take us through the word and nothing, Brother Ronnie, of what he thinks, but it's what the word says. Amen. So many times I've heard preachers in the past say, well, or teachers. They'll tell you how they've heard it through the years. But Sister Barb, it's not really what the Word says. And I just want Brother Scott to know that I love him and I appreciate him. And Sister Paula, I love her too. She's, she's something else. You get, her, <laughs> you get her away from these two guys over here and she's something else. <laughs> But we love her. Love each and every one of you. Y'all pray for us tonight. I was thinking, you know, the Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I love trying to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. You all pray for us. Samuel says we're going old school. <laughs> The world says he's not I'm coming. Lately in life, there's no wind. But it don't matter what the world says. Ready or not, Ready or not he's, he's coming again. again. Will the bridegroom find you waiting? Will your light be shining for you? When the call comes, go out to meet him. Ready or not, he's coming again. Ready or not, our Lord is coming. Ready or not, he's coming again. Will your land be trimmed and burning? Ready or not, he's coming again. To be in the bed, and want to be taken. To be in the field, and want to be seen. The sun to be dawn, the stars to be falling. Ready or not, he's coming again. Ready or not, our Lord is coming. Ready or not, he's coming again. Will your land, 
your lane Be trained and funny Ready or not He's coming to be Well, they're gonna run We're gonna run To the rocks and mountains To cry for the rocks To fall on them But they can't hide From his great judgment Ready or not He's coming again Ready or not, Ready or not the Lord is coming. coming. Ready or not, Ready or not He's coming again. We your lane, your lane be trimmed and burning. Ready or not, He's coming again. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. Ready or not, He's coming again. We your lane, lane be trimmed and burning. Ready or not, he's coming again. Ready or not, here he comes. Ready or not, he is coming. I pray we're all ready. Thank you, Jesus. I, I hate seeing anybody lost. Thank you, I think about the world and you look and watch TV, all things that's going on. And your heart gets heavy to see the things that's happening in this world in the day that we live. They better open their eyes before it's too late. I was sitting around the house and I got to thinking, uh, these are the songs I grew up on. And man, Brent burned a bunch of them up today or this evening. And I was like, man, I was just thinking about all them songs at home. This is great. It was great. I loved it. And I got to write some down. I said, man, I heard mom and dad sing them in a long time. Yeah, I know, right? Hey. I keep watching for the dawning of tomorrow when we'll meet our blessed savior in the sky and all the troubles of today will then be over for god will wipe all the teardrops from our eyes. We're here today. Well, we're here today. We'll, we'll be gone, gone tomorrow. And this life, it won't be a memory. Today we're getting ready for that final journey, and I'm making plans to live in my new home. Soon those eastern skies will bloom with clouds of glory, and at the sound We'll be gone. We're here today. Well, we're here today. We'll be gone tomorrow. And this night, it won't be a memory. Today we're getting ready for that final journey, and I'm making plans to live in my 
Cain's going to go flying. Temporary state. Hallelujah. 
super excited to know that one of these days whether he comes and gets me or I just go on to him that I'm going to see the one who laid his life down for me the shedding of his blood was for the remission of my sins Kenny something he didn't even have to do gave himself as a perfect sacrifice for me Sam Perkins in Bedford, Indiana. But you know what's awesome? That he did it for you too. He did it for everyone that draws a breath of life. That when I bet when he was on that cross, that what he was thinking about wasn't himself at that moment, but I bet he was thinking about you and I at that point in time. I bet that's what got him through. I guess it's just the time of the year, right? Folks, we've got a really lot to be happy about in this church this week. We had six young people give their heart to God. Six young people. Folks, I don't know if you realize what they're going through these days, but 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old kids selling and doing drugs. Mommy and Daddy ain't there for them. Nobody in this world, Barb. They think nobody cares for them. But six this week found out that Jesus loves them. And you know what? They love him too. And they're going to find out in this life, folks, if they stick with him just a little bit. He's going to give so much love to them that they will not be able to even comprehend it. So when they feel alone and feel afraid, Whatever bad things are going on in their life and they just don't feel like they can get a grip, there's one person that they're going to be able to go to and it feels like nobody else loves them and that's Jesus tonight. So I get just a little bit happy and excited to know that one of these days when my life is over because I'm telling you, I'm going to die. Unless he comes to get me, I'm going to die. And it's my responsibility to be ready. And I'm telling you tonight, if you're sitting in this church, that it's your responsibility to be ready. That his life was freely given for you. <laughs> and one day I'm going to walk up, I'm going to give him a hug. If, if I can stop shouting for a second. Mama, my mama is going to be there. Daddy's going to be there. And they're going to say, where you been, son? It's taking you forever to get this place. I hadn't really noticed it because I've been shouting all over the place. <laughs> but I can't wait for one day. One day. Through these trials and tribulations that we make it through. I want to get to kneel at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to tell him thank you face to face for saving my soul. I love him tonight, folks. I don't know about you, but that's my testimony. That one day, I remember I was in a, a place in northern Indiana in a little underground church. and I stood up in the front of the house. Altar call was going on. I was about Jacob's age, my oldest son. It wasn't a fancy prayer. Wasn't fancy. I was just a little guy and I looked up and I said, God, I know that you're real. 
I know that you sent your son for me. I know that there's right and wrong. Will you come into my life and forgive me of my sins? Because I want to follow you for the rest of my days. There's been times that I've slipped up and I've fallen. But instead of letting myself drown in whatever it was, I did just like Peter did when he stepped out on the water. He said, Jesus, Lord, Lord, save me. Folks, and if you're there tonight, and it feels like you're drowning, all you got to do is look up and say, Lord, save me. And he's going to reach down immediately and pull you up out of whatever you're going through. You see, because he don't have respect to person. If he did it for Peter, if he pulled him out of his troubled waters, he's going to do it for me too. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen tonight? That all you got to do is just look up and say, help me, Lord. And that's exactly what he'll do tonight. I love my God. I love my God. Can you give him a round of applause tonight? Can you give him a hand clap tonight? If he has saved your soul, will you give him some glory tonight? If he's brought you out of the miry clay, would you give him some glory tonight? If he has saved your life, would you give him some glory tonight? Listen, I get just a little excited. i got to praise him tonight. I can't hold it in. I've got to give him honor and I've got to give him glory because it is due. It is due. Thank you, Jesus. I love you tonight. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God is a faithful God? He loves us in spite of everything. I was looking and thinking of a song this afternoon. If I can find it, we're going to sing it. If not, we're going to do something else. Can we wing it? You don't have it. Yeah, I'm positive. Because it's the only I sing. I stood in the courtroom. Judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. What do you say? I said, Your Honor, I have no defense. That's when mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Called to the same God saving grace The blood was presented That covered my sins Forgiven with mercy Walked in Mercy walked in Pleaded my case, called to remembrance, God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sins, forgiven when mercy walked in. Blood was presented that covered my sins. Forgiven when mercy walked in. How many glad mercy walked into your life? I can't see you, I can tell you that right now, but you know what? I'd rather be in the light any day than in the dark. I was looking here. Is it okay if I sing another one? Somebody say amen so I don't feel bad. Amen. Remember, I can't see you, so it don't matter who says it. I don't even know what. 
I don't even know if I can see the paper. Uh. When your heart is You ever try to see words and you can't see? When your heart is broken with your grief or troubles you do not have to bear it all alone for you have a friend who knows about your struggles he is standing by when other friends are gone well he will calm the troubled waters of your soul mend your broken heart and make you whole in the storms of your life grow dark and cold he will calm the troubled waters of your soul will deepen every heart there is a longing to find happiness and all oh, such peace of mind when your heart is weary of the searching just turn to jesus and then you will find that he will calm the troubled waters of your soul mend your broken heart and make you whole will when the storm of your life grow dark and bold well, he will calm the troubled waters. He will calm the troubled waters. Yes, he'll calm the troubled waters of your soul. You believe that? Shout amen tonight if you would. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Give them a hand if you would. And he's faithful in more ways than what we can even imagine. Man, I don't know about you, but I am still thrilled about the souls coming to the Lord. Man, I, you know what? Heaven rejoiced. Yes. But all of heaven rejoiced for those souls that came to the Lord this morning. And the one that came to him last week and the ones that came to him last Sunday morning. I want you to know God is good and he's faithful. If you have your Bibles tonight, if you would turn with me to the book of Romans. I want to share with you for a few moments, if I might, tonight. Lord, begin to deal with my heart. Uh, yet even this morning, before uh, the morning service on the message for tonight. And I want to share with you out of the sixth chapter of Romans... And let me say, if there's ever been a time in our lives to be serious with God and to serve Him, it's now. If there's ever been a time in our lives to, the Bible says that we're to cast all of our cares upon Him because He careth for us. Uh, this time is now. The Bible says in the 6th chapter of Romans and the 12th verse, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over ye, over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace." 
Now, a lot of people take that to think, well, I can do what I want to do, but that's not what it's talking about. The Bible goes on and says this, What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Know ye not, and this is what I want you to listen to, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? We want to pray and ask Almighty God to help us if you would. Father, I'm thankful tonight for such a glorious opportunity to be in your house and to worship you. Lord, I thank you for already what you've done in our church this day. And Lord, what you've done over the past seven days. And Lord, how you've ministered and you've lifted up and you've met needs and you've saved souls. And Lord, you've encouraged people. You've been good to us. And we want you to know how much we thank you and how much we love you tonight. But Lord, as you've laid on my heart the words that I'm about to preach, Lord, I know there's what, this is what you want me to preach. Lord, I never preach a message because somebody comes or because I think somebody's going to come. But Lord, I always preach what you've laid on my heart. But I also know this. Lord, without your help, without your anointing, I can't do anything but stand up here and talk. But Lord, with your anointing, uh, Lord, I can say exactly what needs to be said. And I ask, Lord, that that would happen tonight. Open every heart, every ear to receive what you'd have them receive. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would minister to each and every one, supply every need of those that are here, uh, and Lord, those that are watching us online. Father, we ask all this now in the most precious name of Jesus. Uh, and everyone shout it if you would. Amen and amen. I think there's a lot of folks that are struggling with their life tonight. My heart rejoices when I see somebody come to the knowledge of Jesus and they give their heart and life to Him. I, I don't know, you know, there's so many people that, that we don't know what they're going through, we don't know what they're facing, we don't know what's happening uh, when they're by themselves or when they're around people or the things they're involved in. As much as you and I want to know this stuff, uh, as a parent, we don't always know what our kids are doing. But there's one thing that I've learned and one thing that I know, and that's this. Who you serve makes a difference in who you are. A lot of people think, well, I'm not going to serve the Lord, but uh, I'm okay. Let me tell you what, according to what I just read to you, that whoever you yield your members to, that is who you're serving. If you yield your members unto sin, you have become the servant of sin. And we all know who is the father of all sin. So then you become the servant of the devil. Now this ain't me, folks. This is the word. But he said if you are a servant of righteousness, and if you are not that servant of sin, then I like what he said, being made free from sin, ye became the servant of righteousness. A lot of people don't understand tonight that every one of us are responsible for who we are. We are responsible for what we do, what we say, what we think, what we get involved in, and how we react to things that come our way. We are the one that's responsible. We cannot look at anybody else and tell them, it's your fault that I did what I did. No, it's your choice that you do it. And that's what people need to come to that knowledge. Let me say something to you tonight. When the eternity that each and every one of us is going to face happens, and you know what? We're going to all face it. 
either by the grave or by the rapture of the church, we're going to stand before the Lord one of these days. And he's going to look at us. And he's going to say, I want you to open up that book over there. And they're going to open that book. And he says, I want you to locate the name of whoever's standing before him. And one of two things is going to happen. That name is going to be there because you are a child of God, because you've asked him to forgive you, and because you're living the life that you need to be living. And he's going to look at you and he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into everlasting life. That's a choice you made. But then there's others that are going to stand there, Brother Wayne, and they're going to, he's going to ask for their name, and guess what? He's going to look and he says, you know what, I don't find that name in there. And he's going to look at him and he's going to say some of the harshest words that anybody will ever hear. And that's this, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I knew you not. It's a choice. I choose to serve the Lord. I choose uh, to be a child of God. I choose tonight to serve uh, and to love the Almighty. And, and a lot of people say, well, I love the Lord, but I don't want to serve him. Let me tell you what. If you love him, you'll serve him. If you remember this morning, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You can't always be in and out. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be lukewarm. The Bible says if you're lukewarm, he says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'd rather you be hot or cold. Uh, you under, ever understand why uh, somebody that's hot, God's talking to. Somebody that's cold, uh, he's convicting. Somebody that's lukewarm, they think everything's hunky-dory, peachy king, and they're doing nothing. Hello? Amen. Come on. I want to be fire. He yeah. said, I want to be fire. I want to be hot. I want to be so hot that when I walk, uh, folks, uh, you can just feel the presence of the Lord. I sat down for a few minutes tonight uh, before you all got here, and I sat down at the piano, and I began to sing. Uh, and I could just feel the presence of the Lord come in. Uh, and sometimes uh, you feel the presence of the Lord when everybody gets here. Sometimes they bring their troubles, their trials, their tribulations, uh, and all this stuff with them. And the next thing you know, it's beginning to quench what God wants to do. There ain't a person in here that don't have some kind of problem, trial, or tribulation or some kind of need that you want God to take care of. There's not a person in here. But what we have to learn to do is this. We've got to cast our cares on the Lord. Uh, we've got to learn uh, that we've got to serve the Lord with everything we've got uh, and quit playing around with what we're doing with our life. Can I tell you something, folks? Uh, if you're playing around with your eternity, you're the only one that's going to be responsible for what happens when you're called. I got tickled the other day. I don't remember who I was talking to. Yeah, I do, too. It was Deb. I know it's hard. We were talking Wednesday night, and we were talking about people doing things that they know they're not supposed to do. They know they're sinning when they're doing it. And they don't understand that if they die in the middle of that, and they're going to stand before the Lord. They're going to give account for the sin they're doing. That's never been covered by the blood. And she looked at me. She said, there's one thing about it. And I, I appreciate this. They can't say you didn't tell them. Because you told them. I, I'm, I'm not going to stand before the Lord one of these days, Sam. Uh, and him look at me and say, how come you didn't tell people that sin would separate them from God? And if they keep sinning, they're taking their life in their own hand. Let me tell you what, folks. Uh, if in your mind you have any kind of doubt that what you're getting ready to do, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, I wouldn't take the chance. I wouldn't do it. Because the minute you do it, the minute that you do what's wrong in the eyes of God, uh, I'm going to tell you what, you've opened up yourself uh, to the onslaught of the enemy coming in and destroying you. I want to live in victory. Uh, I want to live in the power and the glory and the might of Almighty God. Uh, he says, I'm coming after a peculiar people. Uh, I'm coming after a glorious church, uh, not having spot or wrinkle, uh, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and if you're glorious, uh, if you don't have spot or wrinkle, there's no sin in your life. Uh, and the Bible says don't let sin reign in your mortal body uh, as so many people are doing. Uh, they're serving God on Sunday and the rest of the week they're serving the world. Uh, I'm 
telling you we got to serve him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year. Uh, if you love him, uh, I'm telling you, you need to be serving him all the time. Uh, well, nobody knows what I'm doing. Uh, I guarantee you God knows what you're doing. Uh, nobody knows what I'm thinking. God knows what you're thinking. Uh, nobody knows what I'm going through. God knows what you're going through. Uh, why in the world uh, do you think you're pulling the wool over God's eyes? Uh, he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, uh, all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, all present God. And he knows you better than you do. This morning, how many knows the Bible says that God numbers the hairs on our head? Man, he cares about us. This morning, after we got done eating and I was feeling good, and Deb came over and she said, turn around. What do you mean, turn around? I turned around. There was a, one of my hairs was standing up and she didn't like it. It needs cut. I don't care. I, I, I told her, I said, that's my calic. It don't lay down. Of all things to notice about me, as good as I look this morning, new shirt, new tie, hair combed just right, shaved, everything looked good. I thought, you got a hair out of place. That's how the world is. And I'm not saying she's in the world. They'll pick you apart. They'll look at all the good you've done, and the one time you make a mistake, they'll call you on it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They'll call you on it. I'm going to say something here real quickly, and I want you to listen to me. Don't you ever stand up and say, God told me to do something, and six months later, you start doing what God told you not to do. Even if you miss God, you better not do it, because I'm going to tell you, somebody will call you on it. Hey, I thought you said God said don't do that. And here all of a sudden you're doing it. Well, I was wrong. Well, how do you know you're right about anything? You've opened up the door for everything. I want you to know it's time that God's people get serious with serving God. It's time that the church gets serious with being children of the Most High God uh, and quit messing around in the world, quit messing around in things you know you shouldn't be doing. Uh, I'm telling you what, it's amazing to me uh, the people going to church uh, and oh, thank God uh, that I've got the courage to say this, uh, but they're, they're committing adultery, they're living with one another, and they think everything's okay. Uh, I'm telling you, it's sin. Uh, it will destroy you uh, and it will cause you to miss out on the eternity of Almighty God. But it's okay, because I'm going to get married. You ain't married yet. Quit. Amen. Well, if I take a little nip from the bottle, Bonnie, <laughs> it's okay, because nobody else knows it. Yeah, they do. God does. Or if I... If I take a little bit of something I ain't supposed to have, it's okay. Nobody knows it, but God does. He said, don't let sin reign your mortal body. Don't even give it a place. Don't even give it an opportunity to take hold. Because I'm going to tell you, he is a thief, he is a liar, he is a robber, and he'll come in and he'll destroy you the first opportunity he gets. Don't give him a chance. Don't give him an opportunity. Don't give him anything. Let God have control of your life. Well, you're hard. Uh, you're a hard preacher. Don't you, don't you know we're living in the 2000s uh, and 18 and, and it's okay to do it? Listen, just because the world says it's okay, don't make it okay. Just because because everybody has accepted uh, the sins of this world, it doesn't mean that God has. Uh, he is still God. Now, you say, well, you're preaching this because I'm here tonight. Uh, if you're doing this stuff, you need to stop, but it ain't because you're here that I'm preaching it. It is the truth. People wonder why they don't have victory. I'll tell you why they don't have victory. They have no relationship with the Lord. There's no foundation. They're wishy-washy. 
And that's one of those old time phrases, wishy-washy. One minute they're okay, the next minute. I mean, have you ever seen somebody that if they ain't in church seven days a week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they can't make it? I like going to church. I do. I love going to church, but I don't want to be in church seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That'd get tiresome. There comes a time we used to sing an old song, shut in with God in a secret place. There comes a time you've got to get alone with him. And you've got to develop that relationship that you've got. Just because you convinced yourself it's okay, don't make it okay. Just because, can I use the word but, Kenny? I love the word, the Lord, but. How many times do I hear that? Or I believe the Lord, but. I know God can, but. Every time you interject the word but, you've brought defeat into your life. I don't care what background you're from. We got people here that have gone to probably about every church that you can go to. And, I, you know, it, it don't matter to me what was over the door of the church that you were raised in. Someone every once in a while, what's full gospel mean? I give them the, the quickest definition I can give you for God, full gospel is this. If it's in the word, we believe it. That's it. If it's in the word, we believe it. If God said do it, we need to be doing it. If God said don't do it, we don't need to be doing it. If God said to live this way, this is the way we need to live. If God said don't live this way, this is the way we don't need to be living. It's that simple. It's that easy. But we're making it hard. Let me tell you what. When those two young girls came up there this morning, uh, and I know Grandma and Grandpa here was a little bit thrilled uh, when that granddaughter, because you know what? She moved them out of the way to come. Y'all hearing me? Now, let me tell you what, that little girl's troubled. She was a troubled little girl. But she came up there this morning under her own will. And Scott, when she got up there, tears were flowing down her face. And she was sitting there, and after she prayed, I I looked at them and I said, Do you think God heard you? Because see, a lot of people, after they pray, my mom is the worst at this. If, if there ain't a lightning bolt come down and knock her to the floor and goosebumps six miles long run up, run up down her spine, God didn't do it. She knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes you don't feel it. But that don't mean God didn't do it. I like it when the lightning bolt hits you on top of the head and goes all the way and comes out your toenails. I like it when the goosebumps are so strong and so big you can hang a hat on them and it would stay there. I like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, whether or not you get struck by lightning, spiritual lightning, or whether or not you've got goosebumps don't mean God didn't hear you and God didn't move. Sometimes God moves in that still, small voice uh, and he touches you in a way that you don't even know he's touched you till after he's done it. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I have never prayed where God hadn't answered my prayer. He don't always say yes, but he always answers. Uh, sometimes it takes years before he brings to pass what he said he would do. But I'm telling you right now, if you endure to the end, you will be saved, you will be uh, f- uh, whole, you will make Make it, uh, and it'll be worth it all. Uh, I'm going to tell you, don't let sin reign your mortal body. Uh, don't let the things of the world take hold and root in you. Uh, how many's ever, oh, I got so mad. Anybody ever get mad? I got mad. A buddy of mine brought me some dirt one time. Down here at this house. I needed dirt for the front yard. I said, you got any good? Yeah, I got good dirt. Yeah, he sure did. He brought dirt with that nasty Zolza grass seed all in it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That nasty stuff, the only way you can get rid of it is dig it up and haul it off. Well, come to find out, that's what he did. 
dug it up. Oh, yeah, he was a buddy, all right. Charged me, dumped it in my yard. I put straw and seed and fertilizer, and I had my yard looking good till that stuff took hold. And guess what it did? It choked everything out. I set it on fire. I weed killed it. I'd cut it down with a weed eater where there wasn't nothing left, and guess what? It kept coming back. If you look at the front yard of that house right now, you'll see that it's going around the side of the house. It's coming in the churchyard. It's going in the neighbor's yard. It chokes out everything that's good. Y'all know where I'm going, don't you? You let that seed of sin take root in your life. It will choke out everything good. And until you eradicate it, man, that's a big word. Until you eradicate it and dig it up and get it out, it will always begin to do and choke out what's there that's good. I'm going to say something. You can call yourself a Christian all you want to, but if you ain't living it all the time, you better take a long, hard look at what you're doing. Boy, you're scaring anybody that's getting saved. Uh, let me tell you what, I'm trying to scare some people who says they're saved into really getting saved. There comes a time in your life you've got to get strong. And you've got to get determined. You've got to get steadfast, unmovable. And no matter what comes your way, you're going to serve the Lord. I told someone the other day, I said, I'm going to tell you right now, it don't matter what happens. You've got to make up your mind you're going to serve God. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Fran, has it always been easy to serve the Lord? No. Is it easy now sometimes? It is easier. The longer you're saved, the easier it is. But there's still times that old Fran tries to rise up. Oh, I know. I've heard. I've had story. It wasn't Max. I've heard every once in a while, if we're not careful, that old man will begin to try to take hold again. And you better nip it in the bud like Barney Fife used to say. Nip it in the bud. Before it starts, get her stopped. People used to ask me something. Back when I was a youth pastor, you ever notice that, that kids sometimes, they really don't know what they should and shouldn't do. And they would come up to me, and you're talking a lot of years ago, folks, when I was a youth pastor. And they'd come up to me and they'd say, is it okay to do this? And I'd tell them two things. Number one, is it worth Losing out with God over. And they kind of look at me and said, what do you mean? If there's a doubt in your mind as to whether or not it's right, chances are it's probably wrong and you shouldn't take a chance with it. You're not, your life's not going to be no different if you do or don't do that, but it could be a difference eternity on whether or not you make a bad decision. I'm here to tell you tonight, love the Lord. Love him with everything you've got. Serve him with all your heart. I'm going to tell you right now, the greatest friend you'll ever know is Jesus. The greatest joy you'll ever experience is the joy in serving the Lord. And people say, oh, I wish I'd have done this before. And the more you tell them of the good things of God, sometimes the, the more they shove you off. I can't make people serve the Lord, but I can do this. I can tell you this. You're either for him or you're against him. And if you're for him, thank God. Give him everything you've got. If you're against him, you better hang on. And you better come running as hard as you can to him because he's the only thing that's going to get you out of this life into a better life. I don't know everybody's state. I hope and pray everyone here tonight's born again. If you are not, before you walk out of here, you need to be. If you're just kind of 
iffy about whether or not you're saved before you walk out of here you shouldn't be iffy you should be absolutely convinced that you're saved if you think you're doing something you shouldn't be doing stop it get it under the blood and let's go on amen let's let god do what god wants to do because i'm gonna tell you right now god's getting ready to do a work in this church and if you can't see it i'm gonna tell you right now you need to open your eyes six kids saved in the last seven days that's unheard of a person give their heart and life to the Lord this morning. Rededicate their life to the Lord. Got a message from them. Thank you for such a glorious service this morning. God's touching people. And I'm going to tell you, we better be ready. Uh, and we better have our eyes on the, on the prize. Uh, and you know what? Paul said this. Uh, and this is what people's got to learn to do. Come on, musicians. Uh, he said, forgetting those things which are behind us. Uh, let's reach forth to those things which are before us. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, he said, I fought a good fight. I've kept a faith. Uh, there is laid up for me now treasures in heaven. Uh, I want you to understand. It's your choice. It's your decision. It's what you want to do. Uh, if you want to serve the Lord, I'm telling you, serve him. Uh, if you want to be saved, uh, he's ready to save you. Uh, if you want to be closer to him, he's ready to draw you closer to him. Uh, if you're doing what you shouldn't be doing, don't do it anymore. Uh, get it under the blood and let's go on. Amen. Uh, let's serve the Lord with everything we've got. Uh, let's come before his presence with thanksgiving. Uh, let's let him know I'm blessed today and I'm glad I'm blessed. Uh, I'm born again and I'm glad I'm born again. Uh, every one of you have to make the decision. Uh, every one of you have to understand. Uh, he is God. Uh, he is a rewarder of them to diligently seek him uh, and he will still move in your life if given an opportunity. Can I say something to you tonight? When I was in the world, I thought I had it made. I thought everything was going great. Then I found out I had nothing. And when I came to the Lord, I found out I have everything now. Those many years ago when I gave my heart and life to Him, and I realized I needed Him more now than I ever needed Him in my life. I've been saved a lot of years, folks. But I need him more today than I've ever needed him in my life. Because I'm telling you, this old life gets harder and harder. The battles get longer. They get more difficult. But I know this. I know in whom I have believed. And he is faithful that hath promised. And I know tonight that God loves you just as much as he's ever loved me. God cares for you just as much as he ever cared for me. And all he wants you to do is say, yes, Lord. Would you stand all across this building tonight? Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around for a minute if you would. I want to ask you a question. Would you say tonight, Pastor, I listen to your words tonight. And I'm going to ask two different things tonight, so I want you to bear with me for just a moment. You say, Pastor, first of all, I'm not giving my heart and life to Him. I'm not saved tonight. I don't know him as my Lord and Savior. Would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up right now? Anybody in this church? Hope everybody here is saved, but if that one person's not, every head bowed, every eye closed. Yeah, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Would you slip your hand up right now? I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want you to understand and you realize right now I need Jesus. Maybe you're standing here tonight and you say, you know what? <laughs> I realize right now from what you preach tonight, I've not been doing what I need to be doing and I need to come back with everything I've got to God. I've let some things get in my life that shouldn't be there. I've let, Folks, it could be anything, but I've let some things in my life that shouldn't be there. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to do what God wants me to do. I'm ready to be what God wants me to be. Would you slip your hand right now? Anybody at all? Now, I'm going to tell you, God didn't have me preach this for no reason at all. Are you here? You see, it's your choice. Hang on a minute, guys. I want it very quiet for just a second because I'm going to get real. You're getting ready to make a decision not to do what you know you need to do. And you're going to walk right out of this church. 
And you're going to feel more defeated than you've ever felt in your life. And you're going to say these very words, I wish I would have raised my hand and made it right. You mark my words. This is getting ready to happen if you walk out of this church tonight. You fought it long enough. You've struggled with it for a long time. And every time you get ready, every time you're almost ready to make that step, something is telling you not to and you convince yourself that you can't do it. I want you to know something right now. Yes, you can. God is standing here right now with His arms wide open. And he's saying, come, come, come. I usually don't do this, but I'm telling you, I feel such a heaviness tonight that you need to make up your mind because you may not have another chance. You may not have another chance and what a shame it would be to have thought I could have and I chose not to slip that hand up real quick make that first move that first step and say I need you Jesus I'm going to tell you right now I'm not even going to make you get out of your seat tonight You slip that hand up right now. I need you, Jesus. I need you to take over, and I need you to work in my life right now. Slip it up. Thank you, sir, for that hand. Someone else. Thank you, young lady, for that hand. That's the first step. That's the first step to realize I need you. I need you. Anybody else? Anybody else feel this heaviness I feel right now? I'm going to give another opportunity. Someone standing here right now. And in your mind right now, you're thinking, man, I wish I could do this, but I just don't think I can live it. I don't think God can love me. I don't think it can ever happen. I'm going to tell you right now, you can do it. God loves you, and he's ready to make it happen in your life right now. Would you slip your hand up and say, I need Jesus? Would you do that? Young man, young woman, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever you are, would you slip that hand up? I need Jesus in my life tonight. I need to be born again. Are you here? Are you here? I'm going to ask this entire church tonight that will. I'm not going to single anybody out, and I'm not going to make them come up here by themselves. But I want everyone in this church that will. I want you to get out of your seat. And I want you to come to this altar. You raised your hand. Get out of that seat. Come to this altar. Kneel down and talk to God. See, nobody even knows who you are. Nobody knows anything about it. You, me, and God is the only one that knows. Would you come? Find you a place to pray. Come to this altar. Come on. Come on. Come to this altar if you would. This now. If now's the time to make it right. Now's the time to make it right. Would you come? Would you come? Come to this altar. Simple prayer. Lord, I give it all to you. It's all yours. It's all yours. It's yours, Lord. Would you come? All across this building. Would you come? Would you come? There's no peace. There's no joy. Until the Lord. Place your life in His hands. Rest assured in His plan. Let the Lord, let the Lord have His way. Oh, let the Lord have His way. 
in your life every day there's no peace there's no joy until the lord has his way place your life in his hands rest assured in his plan let the lord let the lord have his way oh let the lord have his way in your life every day there's no peace there's no joy until the lord has his way place your life in his hands rest assured in his plan let the lord let the lord have his way we'll reach out and touch the lord as he passes by you will find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry he's passing by this moment every need to supply well reach out and touch the lord as he goes by and because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives my fear is gone and because i know he holds my future Because he lives, I can face sing it out one more time because he lives and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives my fear is gone oh My life is worth the living just because He lives and because 
He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All my fear is gone, and because I know He holds my future, my life is worth the living just because He lives. God sent His Son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives and because He lives I can face tomorrow because, oh, because He lives, my fears, oh, yes, they're gone, because I know, I know He holds my future, my life is worth the living just because he lived. Oh, bless the Lord tonight. Isn't it good to see God meet needs tonight? Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Because he lived. All fear is gone, and because, Lord, I know He holds my future, my life is worth the living just because he lives well I am blessed well I am blessed well every day that I serve him I am blessed oh when I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest I am blessed I am blessed well I am blessed well I am blessed oh every day that I serve him I am blessed Oh, when I wake up in the morning Till I lay my head to rest I am blessed Oh, I am blessed All of God's people tonight said, praise the Lord I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't want to take a day without knowing Jesus is with me. 
I wouldn't want to take a step without knowing he's right there with me. I'm going to tell you right now, God is so good. And he is so faithful. And all he asks is a serving. Just serving. And everything else will work out. Love the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. Amen. I want you to know tonight, never do I preach a message. And messages like tonight, they're hard. They're hard to preach because you love people. But because you love them, you want to preach what's truth. And you want them to understand there comes a time you've got to make up your mind. And you've got to do what you know is right. And I pray tonight that everyone that uh, raised their hand tonight, everyone that needed to pray, prayed and got the help that they needed. And let me tell you what, don't walk out of here and let the devil tell you God didn't hear you. Don't walk out of here and let him say God doesn't love you because he does and he did hear you. And let me tell you something. God is ready to work a work in all of our lives. Can I get an amen tonight? My, 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 my. Such an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord tonight and to know that he is still God. We're going to let you get out of here if you want to and uh, do what you're going to do. Let me say to you tonight, thank you for coming and being a part of service today and listening to this old, this old preacher pour his heart out because I poured my heart out to you. And I just want you to know I love you, I appreciate you, and I couldn't do what I do without you. And I just want you to know that tonight. So I do love you, appreciate you. It is my prayer that each and every one of you draw as close as you can to the Lord and you feast on the blessings that he has. Can I get an amen from you tonight? Amen. Don't forget, got things going on this week. Oh, my goodness. Hard to believe next week is Easter. Just hard to believe. Uh, don't forget, Thursday night we need help, 3.30. Uh, if a bunch of people show up and uh, don't eat all the candy, it won't take long to put the, the eggs together if we get a lot of people. So we need you sat, uh, Thursday night. Church Wednesday night, Stitchers Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock. Uh, Easter is Sunday morning, sunrise service and all that kind of stuff going on. Folks, I want you to know something. This is an opportunity to get a hold of your family that don't go to church, and maybe they'll come in here. And I'm going to be praying this week that God would absolutely use me in a great way and minister through me, but more than that, that his spirit will be here ministering to the hearts and the lives of everyone that's in this building. So you come out, if you would, and bring somebody with you. Let's just absolutely, let's blow last year's record out of the, out of the water. Can we do that? Whew. Wow, I got nervous there for a minute. You say, what's last year's record? We blow it out this year, I'll tell you. How's that? Amen. Uh, so come on out and, and let's have a good time of fellowship, good time of fun. A lot of things are getting ready to happen. We're getting ready to get busy again as... We always do this time of year. Get involved in everything you can. Do what you can do. And let's just have a good time. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Shake hands with one another. Let them know what you love. And make everyone welcome if you would. God bless you. We hope to see everybody back Wednesday night.